you to our online church service this morning. Uh, there are a couple of things that I want to set the foundation for. We're going to Isaiah 28, 16. We're going to Isaiah 28, 16 because we want you to understand that God just did not use John the Revelator. He just did not use Paul. He just did not use Matthew or Mark or Luke or John to give us confirmation that there was going to be a second coming of Jesus Christ called the Day of the Lord, but there was going to be approaching to that day. In other words, there was going to be a time approaching that day. And he described what we were going to be going through as that day approaches us called the day of the Lord. When Jesus was going to come back the second time, God described to us some things that it was going to look like in the earth realm as that day approaches. Now here's the thing about that is, when God tells us his servants, his mysteries, and, 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 and tells us what he's going to do, it's not to alarm us. See, because we're in him and he's in us. It's to let us know that he's going to bring a certain thing in a certain season. Our, our commission has never changed. We still are supposed to be proclaiming the good news gospel of the cross. We're supposed to be enduring in that because Matthew tells us, Matthew 24 tells us, that he, he to every ear has heard the gospel of him crucified and resurrected, the end will not come. So if we're prevalent and we're faithful and committed in doing our job and not getting drunk with corona, see, because corona, let me, let me, let me, let me tell you the truth. Corona has death if God allows. But now John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son that whomsoever will believe in him got everlasting life. So now if corona hit me on this side, he sure can't touch me on the other side. Amen. So I ain't got to fear corona. For corona got to fear me. Because I'm a child of God. I believe what God says about me. I don't have to stop to get drunk with what Corona is doing. Corona better be getting drunk with what I'm doing by the power of the living God. You understand what I'm saying? Christians are, are allowing themselves to be caught up in Satan's trap. And see, so we're looking, we're not looking at the system of the Antichrist. Because we're constantly looking at the rapture. We're constantly looking at man saying it's not, it, 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 it's not time for revelation yet. We're not looking at what God prophesied to us of the times that we would be in. So what's happening is I want to stop for a minute and get those people out there that's really church people to understand me. When I say this, the spirit of truth does not debate with each other. I don't have to know your name. But the spirit of truth is not a house that's divided. I, you ain't got to know who I am. But if you got the Holy Spirit in you, when that spirit of truth comes from me from this holy word, that Holy Spirit in you will say, mm, that's for me. It's not divided. The only thing that's divided from the spirit of truth is a spirit of error. And so God even went so far as to say, if you don't want to believe the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth, the spirit of truth that you may be saved by, he said, you sing you a spirit of delusion, mm -hmm. which is a spirit of error to make you think you're a part of something, but you're a part of nothing. So when I'm divided, rightly dividing the word of truth, what you need to understand is I'm not here to debate. I'm here trying to fulfill what God commissioned me to do, and that was spread the good news gospel of Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you we're living in a season that man and woman can't get together because the conclusion of the matter is, regardless of whether you get on God's word or not, God's word is going to fulfill. The best thing to do is to make up your mind, I'm going to move with every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God because it is written. And if you don't want to do that, then you just stand over to the side and let me run on. Because I ain't got time to fight with the apostles and prophets. Because I've never known Paul, Paul, who is an apostle of the Bible, fight with me. Because I'm agreeing with them. Because the spirit of truth have led me to Paul. The spirit of truth have led me to Daniel. The spirit of truth have led me to Matthew. I know that they are not lying to me. So I come from the Bible and watch this. Isaiah 28, 16. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, Behold, I lay 
in Zion for a foundation, a stone, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. He that believes shall not make haste. That precious stone, that's Jesus Christ. So he's building the church, a group of people, on the revelation that I say you're Christ, son of the living God. Jesus came to the earth some almost 2,500 years ago. It's almost time for him to come back. And we still sitting there looking at like Christmas is the only thing we need to celebrate. Do you not understand according to Revelation 20 that the earth is going to be rejuvenated, Satan going to be bound for a thousand years, and that we are going to teach and we're going to get a chance if, to meet John the Baptist. We're going to get a chance to meet Paul. We're going to get a chance to meet Isaiah. Because when Jesus come back to earth and stay for a thousand years, because that's the word, that's called the day of the Lord. When Jesus get ready to come back and stay a thousand years, every eye go see him when he come into the, ain't nobody going to have to come tell you who he is, or he's over there, or he's over there. Every eye go see him and every knee going to bow to him. But the approaching, but the approaching day of the Lord is the problem we are having in the church because they don't know how to teach the approaching. It's like they want to just rub out. Five, 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 and six, six, six. When Jesus told John the Revelator to tell us that there were going to be seven seals, seven trumpets, seven vows. If God said there were going to be seven of them, how you going to get stuck in four and refuse to go anywhere, refuse to teach anything that pertains to five and six? See, because six is catastrophical. Because six is going to come and tell you, I'm Jesus. Because he wants to be worshipped as Jesus, but he's not Jesus. That's why Mark, Matthew 24 says, the abomination of desolation standing where it ought not to be. That's Satan's Antichrist entity that he's sending into the earth realm that people might believe that he's Jesus instead of waiting and working in the field, fulfilling the gospel of Jesus Christ. And fulfilling the great commission, instead of staying and working in the field, you're going to get in bed with Satan. Mm -hmm. You say, preacher, you're saying a lot. I'm saying a lot because if you understand what I'm telling you, they've been pestilence and plagues and diseases in the earth realm before. Ain't nothing can shut a door on your life unless God agrees with it. There's nothing can open the door of birth in a life unless God sends an end. So what I'm saying is God is in control. So you're asking the question, why are you going through all this? Because I want to get you somewhere, and I want to get your wheels to turn, and I want you to get through the thinking. I want to explain some things to you. I want you to let the Bible speak to you this morning. I want you to go to Revelation 1, and I want to show you something. Because it's real understanding that we got to quit trying to come to man's conclusion, and we got to take God's truth. Let me say that again. We got to quit coming to man's conclusion, and we got to take God's truth. Now, I'm going to go somewhere with you in Revelation 1. Now, remember this when I go to Revelation 1. Satan is the adversary that's countering everything that God does. In Matthew 4, you remember the last move that Satan made is he tried to offer Jesus in Matthew 4 his kingdoms. Now, I want to explain that the kingdoms that Satan tried to offer Jesus to worship him, because that's all he wants. He don't want to bless you. He wants you to worship him. But he hasn't given you life. He doesn't give you the next breath. He doesn't give you anything. He just wants to prop his ego up so you can look at him and worship him like he's somebody. He ain't created nothing. He stole everything he got. He took one-third of God's children, Revelation 12. So I'm coming to tell you this. Satan is a copycat. He imitates God. And what he's doing with 666, he's sending an antichrist to the earth realm to call himself Jesus 
so that flocks of people will worship him. And that's why the dreadful day of the Lord, the approaching, the approaching, the approaching of the day of the Lord is going to be dreadful and it's going to be sorrowful and it's going to be tribulation because so many millions of people going to be getting in bed with Satan instead of waiting for 777 to get in bed with Jesus Christ. And then they refused to take that he told the disciples in so many different places in the Old Covenant and in the New Covenant that he said when you see blood moons, when you see wars and rumors of wars, when you see economical disasters, when you see parents against children, children against parents, when you see perilous times, men loving themselves, when you see homosexuality, understand that the day is nigh you. We're just running over the signs that God told us to look at. We're not taking them to understand that he gave us this to understand that you need to be living every day as if it's your last. You need to be enduring. You need to be planted on the truth. Now watch this. We're going to Revelation 1. I want, I want, I want to show you something in Revelation. Again, we're back here because I want you to document what God said. The revelation of Jesus. The revelation. Of Jesus. Revelation means to reveal. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show unto his servants. Things to his servants. Uh, I'm one of his servants. Things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. Okay, he signified it unto his servant John. Here's what I need for you to understand. Nobody in 2020 was standing there with John when God took the curtain between heaven and earth and pulled John into the future of heaven and told him to look at what's in the future and write it in a book and give it to the people that he called the church. Nobody was with John but God. But being that I can read Revelation, the curtain of my understanding bringing heaven and its plan to earth with its plan, because this earth is going to act upon what God says, what John saw, and what was going to be approaching that day that God's, I'm going to prove it, I'm going to prove it, what God showed John he was going to approach that day of Jesus coming back the second time, it's going to happen just as sure as you looking at me, and I'm looking at you. It's going to happen. So now what John has done was, through God, and through the angel sending him the message of revelation, is he has allowed me to understand, first and foremost, they seven seals. Second, they seven trumpets. Second, they seven vows. I can count the seven. So John is being given a revelation, and he said, John, don't keep this thing to yourself. You know, he took Paul outside of himself. And when he took Paul outside of himself, he told Paul, he said, Paul, I'm not going to tell you to let you tell everything that I showed you. You're going to have to keep some things. But, but he wouldn't let John, Paul express. But he told John, he said, write in a book everything I'm giving you. Then he goes so far, by the time he gets to the fifth chapter of Revelation, he tells John, he said, there ain't no man can open you to this book. No man on earth nor in he said, but the lamb that was slain before the foundation of the world is the only one found that can open your mind to what these seven seals getting ready to show you. Then he goes on as far as to say, he said, now listen, the book that I'm giving John to give you for understanding, blessed if you read it. Blessed if you understand it. He's telling you verbatim what all seven seals are. He's telling you what all seven trumpets are. And the only reason the curtain of your understanding has not been torn so that what heaven is doing can be received on earth by the church is because you ain't bothered to study. Mm. Let me prove something to you. I'm not going there, but you can write it down and go yourself. Romans 8. Romans 8 says, what can separate you? What can charge anything to God's elect? He said, nothing. But you know one thing that will destroy God's elect? A like of knowledge. Because God has given you 66 books of knowledge. And for some odd reason, 
those seven hidden dynasties that Satan offered to Jesus, you got caught up by, and your mind keep fooling you, you ain't got time to study. Because you're too busy in the political system, you're too busy with the religious system, you're too busy with the economical system, you're too busy with the education system. Uh huh. See, but it, it, the education system ain't just started going against God, being anti-God. Back in the day, they were some Hebrew boys. And the king took the four Hebrew boys and said, take them because they are well established with their God and teach them our way. In other words, educate them on how we do things. Oh, you know they name it, what I call them? They name it Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And he told them, says, if you take them and teach them how we eat, teach them what we do, teach them our way. So educate them in what we do. They said, no. No, we don't want your education. We got a wisdom and an understanding of our own. And they didn't like that. So, but they stood on what God educated them, edified them, brought them up to be. And when they stood on what God brought them up to be, then when they went into the furnace, they stood not on what they were looking at. If it was Corona, it was the fiery furnace of Corona. Whatever it was, they stood on what God said. And they didn't stand on the fear that, well, this furnace could take our life. He said, no, I'm bulletproof. Our warm said we bulletproof because if he don't get us on this side, he going to meet us on the other side. That's what they were saying, and that's what we need now. Because our most important thing that we can ever do is tell somebody about the cross, him crucified and resurrected. Mm -hmm. Because if the church don't continue to exercise it, cause its commission, how is it the light? How is it the salt? So then he says, he gave it to John. Watch this, watch this. On Revelation 110, watch this, watch this. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. John, over 2,000 years ago, was taken into a day me and you ain't seen yet. And look, watch this right here. What, what, watch this, preacher. Watch this. Look at, look at, look at, look at, uh, Look at, look at nine. No, that ain't where I want to be. He told John, he says, write this in a book. Write this, 11, saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, and what thou see, write in a book. And send it unto who? Send it, in, who's called the church? It's the church in our era. So now, let, wait a minute, let's rightly divide that because we want people to get the truth. Israel was God's people. Jesus came to Israel. They rejected him. It was then Saul knocked down by God, gave revelation, and told Saul slash Paul, go tell a group of people called the Gentiles that they are a many-membered body called the church. And then before they could ever get to Saul and Paul, he told Matthew to tell you, if you know who Jesus is, I say you're Christ, son of the living God. Mm -hmm. Then upon that revelation, I'll build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail in. Because if you know the true and living God, you ain't got to fear what Satan is doing. If you will keep your focus on the God, what Satan is doing is under what God is using you to do. But if you drop your focus, and you begin to look at the world like the world looks at the world. You're going to be caught up in the world. Luke 21 says you're going to be drunken by the cares of the world. There's a snare on the whole earth. And what we're supposed to be doing is watching and praying that we escape what yes. God said he was going to bring. That's right. Let me say that one more time because somebody ain't, ain't got it because they want to pray against what God is saying. Right. They are saying... See, because they're not understanding that the Bible is dispensational, which means there are seven seasons in the Bible. And when God applies something in one dispensation, just because you call yourself a Christian don't mean you can go in there and read what that dispensation said to that group of people and it applies to you. It don't work like that. 
What God says to his people in 2020 was this. He said they're going to be a snare on the whole earth. Luke 21, Luke 21. He said they're going to be a snare on the whole earth. You watch and pray that you be able to escape the snare and stand before, stand before the Son of God. What did he tell you to do? He said the snare is coming. He didn't say you could pray. He didn't say you could pray the snare away. He said the snare is coming on the whole earth. He said, here is what you can do. You want to do something, Christian? You want to do something, minister? He said, you watch and pray that you escape right. what I'm getting ready to do. And people are saying, well, I see that God is going to let this thing pass because it ain't the end. Well, if, the, if Corona ends, another one is coming, wait a minute. You better go to Matthew 24 and understand he said that they're going to be pestilence and famine. Famine and pestilence. Pestilence is a contagious disease. But he didn't only say they were going to be contagious diseases. He said they were going to be wars and rumors of wars. That's right. He said they were going to be false crises. Mm -hmm. Which means false people telling you, you're yeah, on Christ. Yeah. And has no understanding of what Christ is doing. So he's told Paul to tell us. He said they're going to be steady going, running to and fro, having a type of godliness, but denying the power of God. Because if truth don't set down from God in your heart, you ain't got no power to be set free with nothing. That's right. You ain't got no power. It's the truth that sets you free. It's you enduring in the truth. That's why Matthew 4, 4 says you must live by every word. So the conclusion of the matter is this right here. But you got to understand from the lives of Jesus' disciples, it is important for us to arrive at one certain, certain set of conclusions about God and his relationship with us. Number one is these conclusions will never be set up as long as they rest on the opinions of others or as long as they rest upon the opinion of man and right. his feelings. Right. The conclusion of the matter can't come. The truth can't come as long as man debate with what God is saying. Mm, I'm going to prove what I'm saying. Then you got to understand our personal opinions and our personal feelings don't matter. Go to Psalms 119, 130. Let me show you something. Psalms 119, 130. I hope you have learned to get your pencil and paper when God is using me to give his revelation. I'm going to tell you something. It amazes me that God uses me because you know why? I was so wretched that I, I, I couldn't understand why he would even want to use me. But his power is greater than my righteousness. Mm -hmm. Psalm 119, 130. Listen to what it says. The entrance of thy word. The entrance of thy words. Give it light. Let me read that one more time. The entrance of thy words give it light. It give it understanding until the simple. It give it understanding. He said the entrance of thy words. Give it light. Did you get that? <laughs> now let me, go, let me go a step further. The entrance of thy words give it light. It give it understanding until the simple. I open my mouth in panic and I long for thy commandments. Look thou upon me and be merciful unto me as thou see it to do unto those that love thy name. Order my steps in thy word. And let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Let not any iniquity have dominion over me. If you allow his word to enter in, no iniquity will have any dominion over you. So we're, we're getting ready to go somewhere, but listen to this. God's placed in our lives his word which flows out of experience in the word of God as a living revelation in us. This word is a living revelation, a living manifestation in us. If you receive it, you hear it, you listen to it, you meditate on it, you exercise it, it is a, 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 it ain't only 
only a battle axe. Mm -hmm. It's also a healer. Mm -hmm. It ain't only a healer. It's a decreer of the promises. Mm -hmm. It ain't only a decreer of the promises. It's a savior. Mm -hmm. It ain't only a savior. It will sacrifice, sanctify you and set you apart. Mm -hmm. It ain't only a, sa a sanctify that will set you apart. It's mercy. Mm -hmm. It's grace. It's God's outstretched arm to you. It's our faithfulness of how God is. You're understanding he does not lie. So you can be faithful to him because he's forever going to be faithful to you. That's what it is. So it's flowing in from you when you believe it. You ain't got to worry about whether or not this word can enter into you. ain't got enough power to show itself because it got so much power when it goes in. Jeremiah said it's like fire to shut up in your bones. When it goes in, it's going to come out in love. When it goes in, it's going to come out in teaching. When it goes in, it's going to come out in giving. When it goes in, it's going to come out God every day. Yes. If you exercise it. So now, therefore... We want to preach the good side of what God is always doing. But God is going to allow this approaching day of the Lord where Satan is going to use everything he got to get you to worship him. And he's coming at 666 in 1 Corinthians 15, 50, 51, 52. He says we will not be changed to the last trump. We will not be changed to the last one. So the people that are still living on the earth that are called Christians approaching 666 is going to go, go, go through trials and tribulations such as man has never seen on the earth. Matter of fact, uh, Luke 17 says, if you want to know the signs of that approaching day and when it's getting nigh, he said, all you got to do is remember the days of Noah. Luke 17, that's where I got that from. Remember the days of the Noah and remember the days of Lot. Now, now, now what was happening in Lot day? Uh, Homosexuality. Homosexuality. <laughs> okay, well, wait a minute. Sodom and Gomorrah was just one geographical location. Mm -hmm. We have passed homosexuality worldwide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He burnt Sodom and Gomorrah down with hell-sized stone, hell-sized mm -hmm. uh, 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 size of hell of fire, big as softball. And we done took what he burnt Sodom and Gomorrah down and passed it around the world. Okay, I'm going to go somewhere. I'm going to do the whole way right here. Then the days of Noah, it says Noah was building because God ordered him to build because he, was, he had repented. He had made man. So he told Noah to build an ark to escape because Noah found favor in God. You say, well, Noah was a drunk. Well, let's see. That's where God's covenant mercy comes in at. Because, see, he might have been a drunk to you. But when God looked at him, God didn't see him like that. See, that's what I'm trying to tell you right now. It don't matter to me how you look at me. It matters to me whether you're looking at the truth. God is looking at me to deliver. See, I ain't trying to get you to look at Pastor Samson. I want you to hear the truth that's coming from Pastor Samson. And if you got the Holy Spirit, it knows I'm not trying to lie to you. It knows I'm not trying to be no super apostle. I'm trying to win some souls. So when you look at what Noah did, he built that ark. But while he was preaching to the people 120 years, they passed by. What you doing, Noah? I'm building an ark that's going to rain. I'm building an ark that's going to rain. You want to be saved, you need to understand what Jesus is doing. They were laughing at him, mm -hmm. eating, drinking, being married. That's he right. says in Luke, the 17th chapter, in the day before Jesus get ready to turn, it was going to be homosexuality, mm -hmm. and it was going to be people eating and drinking and That's getting right. married. In yeah. other words, stop for a minute and let me break your understanding open. In other words, what people were going to be doing was going to be becoming a part of what Satan offered Jesus in their antichrist system mm -hmm. to get them to worship him because he's the ruler of that system. Mm -hmm. And those systems that he's got set up in what he called American dream, mm -hmm. let's rightly divide them. Mm -hmm. The political system. <clears throat> oh, vote for me and I'm going to take care of the poor. Mm -hmm. uh, vote for me. <clears throat> I'm going to put a chicken in every pot. <laughs> vote for me. I'll get it done for you. You ain't never even heard of the name of these people. <laughs> the Bible said, know the spirit by the spirit. That's right. 
You don't know who that is telling you that, so I'm here to tell you the whole Bible. All 66 books, I can tell you one thing. The Bible never led you to believe in a man. Mm -hmm. The whole Bible, conclusion of the matter is, he says, see God. That's mm -hmm. right. He's your creator, the author, and the finisher of who you are. Yes. He says, see God. <laughs> and so now God is telling us certain things that he's going to do, and the preachers are standing up telling the people, oh, God ain't going to do that. He did. I don't know if he sent Corona. He been sending more than Corona. Hong Kong flu, bird flu, smallpox. He been sending pestilence on the land ever since man been on it. Where you been? He just said it's going to increase in the last days. Okay, let me read it for you. Let's go to Luke 21. Let me read it for you, and then we're going to go, we're going to, go to Luke. We're going to go to Revelation 17 because I want to show you something. Watch this right here. Now you ready for what God did ready to tell you through Luke? See, you didn't ever personally meet Luke. God called him. He walked with Jesus. But I, I understood that he walked with Jesus because I, I hang out with him all the time. Luke is still teaching me. Paul is too. Isaiah is still teaching me. Now, even Moses is still teaching. Solomon is still teaching me. Why? Because I got a a, a, a commitment and a desire just for them to let them fill me with their righteousness of what God showed them. Watch this right here. Luke 21. Luke 21 11 is where I want to take you to. Luke 21 11 is where I want to take you to. But let me prove something to you. Luke 21 says, 7. Luke 21 7. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be, and what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? Talking about the end time revelation, who's asking them? The disciples. Listen to what he says in 2111. You ready? He says, And great earthquakes shall be in diabolous places, and famines, and pestilence, contagious diseases, and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from where? Heaven. From where? Heaven. From where? Heaven. And you're going to stand up and teach your church that you don't know where Corona came from? Let me read it again. <laughs> and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places, and famines, and pestilence, contagious diseases, mm -hmm. and fearful sights, and great signs shall there be from heaven. Where is it coming from? Heaven. From heaven. Okay, so heaven is in control. Mm -hmm. So who sits on the throne in heaven? God. Who sits at the right hand of it? Jesus. Okay, so now who on earth is allowing us to be in touch with what heaven is doing? Oh, let me read it. Let me read it. Don't answer that. <laughs> it says, I was in the spirit mm -hmm. on the Lord's day. <laughs> so the spirit must be operating on earth, but it says God the Father, God the Son, mm -hmm. and God the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. are one. Mm -hmm. right. So ever who the Holy Spirit moves in... Mm -hmm. Is an extension, is a partaker, mm -hmm. is a representative mm -hmm. of what heaven is doing. Mm -hmm. No wonder God told Paul to tear the curtain of understanding so that heaven and earth could be brought together in wisdom and knowledge mm -hmm. so that earth and the people of the church would understand the mysteries of God and what God was going to be doing. He outlined it verbatim. He said, this is what I'm going to do in seal number one. This is what I'm going to do in trump number one. This is what I'm going to do in seal number two. This is what I'm going to do in trump number two. This is what I'm going to do in seal three. This is what I'm going to do in seal four. This is what I'm going to do in seal five. Yo, you want to see? Let me show you. Let's go to Revelation 5. Let me show you something. No. I want to go to Revelation 7. Now, watch this right here. I want to go to Revelation 6 and 9 and come down. Remember this. We're talking about the seals. 
And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. That would be Paul and John and all of, all of those that, you know, gave up their life to serve God. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, does God not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? How long are you not going to avenge us that dwell on the earth? And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. Mm -hmm. Oh, there's certain number of people that's going to be killed in the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is the fifth seal. Remember that now. Mm -hmm. Look at 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black, with meek wickedness, and Sychar, what, what, what was that? Six seal. Sychar was out, and the moon became as blood. And the moon became as blood. The sixth seal is open. Let's see, let's see, let's see what's happening at the sixth seal. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree casted her untimely figs. Oh, so, so, so the fig trees got untimely figs on it. Huh? Oh, the, the blood is on the moon. Yeah. The fig trees got untimely figs mm -hmm. because everybody is rush, ch, r, rushing to get on the rapture mm -hmm. and be untimely at six mm -hmm. and don't want to wait to seven. Yeah. See, because if you get up on board at six, it's going to be like you getting on the on the fig tree in the middle of, of February knowing yeah. that the cold going to catch you because the fruit tree don't produce its fruit till summertime. That's right. Okay. So you're going to be untimely, but, but you won't. I want to be the first one taken. You're going to be untimely? Yeah. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> if you let your mind get in bed with that, you're going to be untimely. Mm -hmm. Untimely fruit. So Jeremiah 24, 1, 2, and 3 will tell you you're going to be that very, 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 very bad, very bad fruit because mm -hmm. you're going to be untimely. Okay, well, let, let's run on, let's run on. And the heavenly part of the scroll, when it was rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. Listen, listen, listen. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondsman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain. You want me to tell you why they hid themselves? Because they have now discovered that they got in bed with the wrong God. They worshiping the wrong thing. They worshiping 666 mm -hmm. and ain't failed to wait on 777. Mm -hmm. Jesus number 8 to 7. That's the approaching day of the Lord. If you get in bed and sick, come on, here he is. He's over yonder pulling fire from heaven. That's untimely. Yeah, that's, right. that's not him. Don't get in bed with that lie. Because you're going to give up everything you've been sincerely working for as a Christian. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. <laughs> he said, and, and said, 16. And said to the mountain of the rock, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen, oh, he talking, he talking, he talking. He said, he said, hide our faces mm -hmm. from the face, hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. Mm -hmm. For the great day of his wrath is come, who shall be able to stand him? Mm -hmm. Oh, we want to go into seven because this is what I bought you here for. <laughs> we want to go on down into seven because you know we're still in the sixth seal. Mm -hmm. You know we're still in the sixth seal. <laughs> Watch this right here. And after these things I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth holding the four winds of the earth that the wind should not blow on the earth nor on the sea nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having the seal of the living God. Yes. What are you going to do? What, 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 what this angel going to do? With these seals. What's this? Now he talking to, he talking. Listen, if you got the Holy Spirit, you know he talking to you. Mm -hmm. Because the, the spirit of truth knows the spirit of truth. Yes, the right. spirit of truth knows that anybody that's preaching from this Bible is not trying to be exalted. They're trying to be a base and humble that they may give to other people what God is giving to them. Okay, watch this. And I saw another angel ascending from the east having a seal of the living God. What are you going to do with it? That angel got a seal of the living God. Mm -hmm. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Saying, hurt not the earth, neither the sea, 
nor the trees till we have sealed the service of our God in their forehead. What's in your forehead? Your mind. So God took so much mercy that he's telling the four winds of nature. I hope you get that. Sort of like Corona. <laughs> Don't touch mine. Right, Cause they sealed in their forehead. Yes. Huh? Yes. I'm not telling you don't go to the doctor. I'm not telling you any of that. But I want you to understand that if you ever gonna hold faith up in God, you need to understand that you need to be unwavering in Him right now. See, because I'm gonna prove something to you in just a few minutes. Because I want you to go to Hebrews 12, 26. I want to show you something. And then hold your finger there. Because he done told you, he said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to feed you. Wait a minute before you leave Hebrews mm -hmm. I mean, Re Revelation. <laughs> I'm going to tell you this again. Listen to this. Revelation 1, 12, 1, 11. Go ahead on to Hebrews 12. Revelation 1, 11 says, saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. Mm -hmm. What thou seest, write in the book and send it to the seven churches, which is in Asia, Edifus, and Now watch this right here. He says in Revelation 1 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the ending, and said the Lord, which is, which was, which is to come, the Almighty. Now, to the Bible scholar, you have to rightly divide what is, what is to come, and what was. To the Bible scholar, if you're going to study to show yourself approved, you have got to discern. What is? That's right. That's right. What was? Yes. What is to come? Because he said, I'm not just what what was. Mm -hmm. right. He said, I'm not just what was. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm what is too. <laughs> he said, if you want to go a step further, I'm also what is to come. Oh, right. Huh? <laughs> so now he ain't talking about Jesus coming at Christmas time with, with no, no shepherds coming in looking at him in the manger. Mm -hmm. he, that doesn't happen. Yeah. So that's what was. Yeah. That's right, what we need to understand is what is. Can I take? Can I take? Can I take? <laughs> what is is the approaching date of the Lord and the sorrows that it's gonna bring from people getting in bed with the Antichrist and receiving no power from God's word, getting tangled up with deception when they got such a great opportunity to get tangled up with the truth. Hey, he done told you in John. He said, the truth will set you free. He said, there ain't no other way. He said, I'm the way, I'm the truth, and I'm the life. He said, there ain't no other way for you to come to the Father. That's right. Then he goes so far to say, you don't want to believe what my word says? Second Thessalonians, second chapter. He said, you don't want to believe what my word said? He said, I'll turn you over. That's right, thank you. To a, retro, a, a spirit of delusion to make you think you're a part of something. You're a part of the millions of people going to church right now with a sincere heart that's going to ask the mountains when they find out they've been in bed with the wrong thing, going to ask the mountains to fall on them. Now listen to this. When God started this plan, he started out with Noah. He started with Adam and Eve in the garden. Then he, he went on and he had Noah. He went on with Abraham and he got Moses and he chose Israel to be his people and he came all the way through and he elected kings because the people wanted it. And then he, he, he constantly told us looking forward in the Old Testament, he said, this is not it. He said, the blood of animals is not what I've got for you. He said, I got something coming better. He said, I got a priest for every man, every woman, every boy, every child, every race of people. He said, I'm going to upgrade these animals having to die mm -hmm. and be had for you once a year. I'm going to do away with that. So that's what was. Mm -hmm. What is now is Jesus has already come to the earth and went to the cross. Mm -hmm. And the Bible tells us in so many places, if you don't accept him crucified and resurrected, mm -hmm. you're going to miss so great of an opportunity right, right. to have salvation. Mm -hmm. Because everything God was going to do ran into Jesus Christ the Savior mm. and fulfilled every plan and purpose he had for mankind. Mm. And you can accept that and get on board. I don't care how wretched you are. Mm. His mercy will mm. go mm. to whomsoever mm. will. Mm. It proved it by the thief on the cross. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes, Lord. Mm. The thing about it is, is we stop right there looking at him 
lying in swaddling clothes <laughs> and the star in the sky right. and celebrating Christmas once a year. Mm. Bing, 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 I'm blowing the trumpet. Wake up. Yes, because now we are farther advanced to the day of him coming back as intercede, the high priest, bringing that millennial temple in Ezekiel 40 to the earth to stay a thousand years. I don't know where man is getting from the Bible. He's going to come to the earth and leave when Revelation 20 said he's going to come and stay a thousand years and bind Satan. That's, right. That's the word. That's what John is trying to break over in our understanding and knowledge of. That's why God took John in. God didn't ask us if, if we wanted him to take John. He gave us his servant, John. <laughs> now, if you read what John saw, because when you look at Revelation, have you ever noticed when you look in Revelation, John is constantly, all the time, telling you, I saw, mm -hmm. I heard, mm -hmm. I saw, mm -hmm. and I heard. Have you ever noticed that? <laughs> well, he's given us revelation of what God has showed him. If you don't believe his servant, what good was it for him to take him in the spirit to reveal it to you? Oh, oh, uh, uh, you know you ain't got no business reading Revelation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Are you in the church ever? <laughs> Has Christ died and became head of the church, the many member body? Don't let man lie to you and tell you you ain't got no business listening to John the Revelator. Because I'm going to tell you why John the Revelator is important to you. John the Revelator took the veil mm -hmm. that was between the day of the Lord and what heaven was going to do in that approaching day and what was happening on earth. He tore it up. And he said, what God showed me in this spiritual vision, I'm going to show you. I'm not going to let there be no dividing line of your understanding. Everything God showed me, I'm going to write it in a book and I'm going to show you. Then he goes on to say, God also revealed to me that if you will read what he told me to put in this book, blessed if you read it, blessed if you receive it. And preachers are preaching, no, you, you ain't got no business in Revelation right now. I don't believe. God sent those preachers that would tell you that. That's right. I believe God wanted to prepare his people. Let me explain something to you. Let me show that. Slow down. Let me explain something to you. What God described to you about pestilence and famines and love, whites and cold, and men getting worse and worse, and children against parents, blood on the moon, what God described to you is not to alarm you. What God described to you is to tell you time is not. Yes, but he also wanted you to understand, prepare, because Hebrews is finna tell you something. I'm going to let Paul tell you, because God gave it to him. I'm just borrowing it. Mm -hmm. We're going to Hebrews 12, and we're going to read 26. No, let's go up to... Uh, let's go to uh, 22. Hebrews 12, 22. But ye are coming to Mount Zion, and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an unnumberable company of angels, to the general assembly in church of the firstborn, Jesus, the church. Think on that word again. <laughs> to the general assembly in church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven. Mm -hmm. Your name is not only written in the courthouse, <laughs> Your name is written in heaven too? Yes. It's written in heaven and to God the judge of all and to the spirit of just men made perfect. Mm -hmm. To the spirit of just men made perfect. Watch this. And, and to Jesus the mediator <clears throat> of the new covenant. Yes. And to the blood of the sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Mm -hmm. Sin that ye refuse not him that speaketh for if they escape not who refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Oh, he's speaking from heaven. Yes. If we turn from him speaking from heaven, we're not going to escape. Listen to what he said. Listen to what he said. 
26. Whose voice then shook the earth. Mm -hmm. His voice shook the earth. But now he has promised, saying, Yet once more, I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. Mm -hmm. Listen to what he said. And this word yet once more signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Mm -hmm. If you are in truth, yes, Lord. you may remain. Mm -hmm. That's right. But if you are not in truth, you're going to be shaken. Mm -hmm. You do everything you can. Don't listen to Pastor Samson. Don't listen to Bishop Tutu. You get in your word and you listen to God because God gave you the spirit of truth to reveal all truths, to bring all truths back. You'll remember his word does not lie. He just said, I'm going to shake it. He said, and anything that's going to be shaken, it can't be. In other words, I'm going to put it in my words. He said, anything that's going to be shaken can't be in me. That's right. Right. Well, guess what being in him means? Being in his understanding. Yes. So, the lack of knowledge will not destroy you. Can I go one more place? Can I go one more place? Because I I, I, I I see the spirit is sickling me. You know, I got a spirit, a spiritual clock in my head. Can I go one more place? Uh, you, you sure? Yeah. 28. That's where I'm moving to. Watch this right here. Wherefore, we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved. <clears throat> Let me read that one. <laughs> Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace. Yes. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Wait a minute. Is that why Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Yes. That's why Christ was walking with he was consuming the fire yes. so it wouldn't hurt Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Right. You think he can consume Corona? Yes. <laughs> he consumed leprosy on the ten leper boys. Yes. He consumed the issue of blood. He consumed death for Lazarus. Right. There is nothing impossible for him. Your security is if you are in him and you know who you are. Don't let the world and what's happening in the world that God told you must happen so that his word would be fulfilled. Don't let it drunken you. Stay in the field working every day as if it's your last. Because here was God's concern. God said, when I come to earth, can I find faith on the earth? And the next thing he said, he said, I'm going to have to step in, yes, to cut the time sure. short of my very elect going to be deceived. He didn't say you were going to be destroyed. He said you're going to be deceived. Guess what you're deceived by? You're deceived because you don't know what you were spiritually in bed with. You don't know the spirit of error versus the spirit of truth. If you deal with this strict and spiritual word, you will get used to hearing that tune called truth. That's right. And that tune called truth is a spirit. Yes. It will allow you to discern the spirit of truth versus the spirit of error. Yes. I don't have to get close to a lie right. before I already know that the Holy Spirit in me will go bing, 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 spirit of error, spirit of error. The thing about it is, I don't know who these preachers belong to? When they make up their mind from their own belly that they can take any message of what was, very little of what is to come, very little of what is. So they constantly take what was and try to preach you a sermon to get their paycheck. Mm -hmm. Habakkuk say they hirelings. That's right. Because they scatter the flock and they're not leading the flock with the truth. They're not leading the flock on the path and the journey that God outlined. Can I tell you something? Can I tell you something before I close out? Mm -hmm. Every righteous man, every righteous woman, it, what remark, it don't matter what race you are. That's right. Your righteous footsteps have been ordered by the word of God. That's right. That means that his revelation to you is important mm -hmm. on how you discipline yourself to make your appointed times in your journey to everlasting life. Mm -hmm. If you let man have so much control over your journey, 
It's like taking your car keys and throwing them out in the parking lot and say anybody they want to can drive my car. Your condition of your car, when you get it back, you might not get it back. <laughs> Salvation is more important than if you had five Lamborghinis. Because you only got one chance to make this journey to everlasting life. Mercy and grace will pick you up where you fall short. But if you get tangled up with Satan, you're going to feel like you're bulletproof and that you know all truths and you're going to be uh, so proud and so self-righteous you ain't going to want to hear the truth. And anybody that comes along and tries to give you truth, the first thing you want to do is debate. But I'm here to tell you the spirit of the living God of truth, it don't have no debate. If you ain't in the spirit of God, we ain't got nothing against each other. We ain't no big eyes and no big U's. All of us humble ourselves because we're trying to win souls because we realize it ain't nothing about, let me say this one more time, it ain't nothing about us. It's all about him. I'm just trying to get my soul won. And because he commissioned me and gave me the divine right to have the wisdom and revelation and knowledge of the Bible, I stand to preach to you because he gave me that gift so that I can one day hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. That's the only reason I got. You ain't hear me ask you for no money. You ain't hear me ask you for nothing. So by your head. Spirit of the living God, in the strong name of Jesus, first and foremost, we come, Lord, to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for the things that you are doing. Thank you for what you've already prepared us for. Thank you, Lord, for us being prepared because of your word. Your word is true. Father, I ask that you open hearts, open souls, open minds to give them an understanding that we're living in the last days. Yes. But we yet have a journey to go. Yes. Father, there's deception on every hand. There's things going on in what we call the church house. They've been formed a kingdom of cults. Denominations everywhere, 33,000 of them. Father, I know that your son Jesus, who died for the church, cannot be pleased with what man has done, with what he said he would build, and the gates of hell would not prevail again. There's so much deception in what we call the church house. Yes. Father, that it does not even resemble what you put on earth yes. to be deemed the church of the living God. Yes. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, to those people that have a sincere heart, yes. open their minds, Father, that they may have the veil torn, mm -hmm. that they may understand what heaven is doing to move earth mm -hmm. to salvation. That every man and every woman, every boy and every child yes. would have the purpose and the right to hear the good news gospel of Jesus Christ crucified and resurrected. Yes. Father, I ask, Lord, that you lift them up. Draw them nigh to you that they may be saved. For this is your servant, friend, in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Amen. amen.